the number of scam cases in Singapore has been rising. In 2022, there was a nearly 33% rise in such cases, with victims being cheated of over 660 million Singapore dollars. In response, banks have been tightening their security features on their banking apps on mobile devices. One such security feature rolled out by OCBC prevented users who had downloaded apps from unofficial stores from accessing the bank's online banking services. OCBC said the new security feature is to protect customers. But public backlash to the move took market watchers by surprise. Despite these reminders, there are still customers who continue to install apps from outside the official stores. And in general, customers who do not take the necessary precautions will be expected to bear the losses arising from malware scams. That's why the banks are proactively implementing the new security measures to protect customers from malware scams, including those who are less digitally savvy. The security feature only targets Android phones, which experts say are more prone to such malware attacks. For Android phones, because of how easy it is to distribute, right, even to create and send out right, on a mass scale, such unauthorized apps, malicious apps, or apps masquerading as another legitimate app, this is of a big concern. And if you are not uh, familiar right, to look into your settings, to check every app settings, what permissions have you previously given it? And that's where, when it's already installed in your phone and you forget about it, uh, it may, right, be able to monitor, right, your actions on uh, other apps, for example, right, banking apps, and of course, also be able to take over, right, your mobile phone, and uh, that's where siphoning of funds and hanging incidents can occur. And there are precedents for this. In March and April this year, 113 Android users had their banking credentials stolen in phishing scams. The victims were sent a URL that directed them to download an app from a phishing site. The Association of Banks in Singapore says all banks are trying to find a balance between convenience and security. Banks are playing their proportionate role in protecting their customers. In the consideration, there is a balance to be struck between security and convenience to the customer. Admittedly, there is inconvenience caused to the customers. But on balance, I think better to be safe than sorry. Despite the assurances, some users have complained that they need geo-blocked apps, such as China-centric ones, for work, but these can't be installed from the App Store. What options do these customers have? There are ways in which the uh, users can um, circumvent some of these uh, risks. First of all, they, they have to uh, turn on the uh, security features on their uh, mobile device platform. Um, and case in point, uh, if you look at um, Android devices, there is uh, the Rogue profile that uh, allows you to create a, a separate environment for all your work apps. Um, and then in uh, Samsung devices, they have secure folder where you can actually install uh, applications that run within a secured environment and everything is encrypted and protected. Right? So these are just examples of ways that um, uh, people can then segregate the, uh, the controlled environment and, uh, and the bank's environment, for example. Experts say that with mobile devices becoming more pervasive in our daily lives, customers can expect more regular and even more stringent security updates from banks and other organisations in the future. Because of the dynamism of uh, the digital environment, uh, you will have to expect more updates and security restrictions and, and such to exist. And I guess the key word is to coexist with it, right? In the aftermath of 9-11, there was a paradigm shift. Um, the enhanced security measures were not introduced 
so much to inconvenience passengers, but rather to instill a sense of safety and, and confidence in the air travel. So similarly, you know, the bank's app restrictions, uh, though they may introduce uh, certain inconveniences, right, they stem from a similar need to establish trust and protect users' um, financial assets in the digital sphere. Some critics have said that there could have been a more coordinated rollout of these features by the banks, perhaps spearheaded by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. But experts say such an approach may indeed benefit the scammer rather than the customers. The banks separately have their own internal teams, right, constantly thinking, researching what's happening out there to be able to better provide security to their users, access to their uh, banking applications, and of course, maintaining a different competitive edge against one another. So if there's something that is standardized out there, right, number one, banks may lose out on that uh, security edge, but number two, this would also then allow right, the hackers, the scammers to be able to understand how such uh, security technologies uh, are working and then give them uh, better insights onto how they can bypass, right, find uh, or exploit uh, loopholes. So that's why this should still maintain, to a large extent, confidential, proprietary, right, so that uh, this uh, is a good firewall against uh, scammers and hackers out there.